As I'm sure you've noticed in your own lives, coming of age in different periods of history marks who we become and affects the course of our lives. For those of us who've lived through the painful last decades of climate inaction, we can only guess what the impacts of that reality are on young people who are entering adulthood now. Jamie Margolin is an exceptional young leader whose impassioned work has reached the national and international stages. As a freshman in high school in Seattle, she started working on the climate crisis. She testified on and lobbied for legislation at the city and state levels, gave speeches and organized and attended events. In 2018, Jamie founded the nonprofit Zero Hour to put together youth climate marches in Washington, D.C. and around the world. In 2019, she testified before a U.S. House of Representatives committee on voices leading the next generation on the cl global climate crisis. She presented alongside of Greta Thunberg, the Swedish teenager who has galvanized global attention by leading climate strikes with the same moral clarity that Jamie brings to her courageous work. In 2019, Jamie also participated in the Youth Climate Summit that Zero Hour organized in Miami. During all this, she somehow managed to write and publish her powerful field guide of a book, Youth to Power, Your Voice and How to Use It. Today, she's a freshman at NYU, pursuing a film future to share her vision and storytelling gifts with the world. But what Jamie will talk about today which is relevant and timely for so many of us to hear now, is how to navigate the pitfalls of burnout in a climate-disrupted and outrageously unequal world of hurt, stress, and planetary emergency. Please welcome this wise human being whose strong stands and learning benefit us all, Jamie Margolin. Hi, Bioneers. It's Jamie Margolin, and I'm so excited to be speaking with you all today. Now, I'm an 18-year-old um, climate justice advocate. I am the co-founder of an international youth climate justice organization called Zero Hour, um, a film student at NYU, and a plaintiff on the youth versus government lawsuit in Washington State, suing the state of Washington with the uh, Our Children's Trust, which is the organization doing the lawsuit, over Washington State continuing to make the climate crisis worse and denying our constitutional rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because you can't have life, liberty, or happiness without clean air, clean water, and a livable planet. I'm also the author of a book called Youth to Power, Your Voice and How to Use It, which is a guide to being an organizer for any cause and is available everywhere books are sold. I'm here to you today to talk it's about the mental health impacts and the psychological impacts of the climate crisis and being an activist and taking action. We're gonna talk about burnout and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story of how I shifted my relationship with activism and, and the climate crisis to something that I'm hoping is gonna be more healthy because I interacted with um, the movement and climate change and climate activism in a pretty unhealthy way that I feel like a lot of people do. And I just, you know, I'm not in a place where I'm 100% better or I feel 100% confident in where I'm at, but I just wanted to share my journey and where I'm at. And hopefully that will help other people who are also struggling with burnout and climate anxiety and just all of the different mental health impacts of being an organizer trying to stop the end of the world. Um, so... At first, when I was first starting to organize, I was 14 years old and I was very, very enthusiastic about taking action. I'd heard about burnout and more experienced activists and organizers were like, don't exert yourself too hard. People get burnt out easily. This movement is tough. You're constantly surrounded by bad news. Just take it easy. But little 14 year old freshman me in high school was like, taking it easy is for chumps. I'm gonna go full force ahead full speed ahead, I care about this issue, I finally found a community of people who are taking action against the climate crisis, so I'm like, I'm gonna go full speed ahead. Now I was um, 
enrolled in a, a very like difficult high school in the sense of academically difficult high school. So I had a lot of homework piling on and a lot of work to do, but I was like, um, I was like, no, I can balance both. I can be the best student I can be. And I can also be the best activist and organizer I could be. And I was working with an organization called Plant for the Planet in Seattle um, and doing a bunch of other stuff around the city, around climate action, and also trying to write different articles about the issue. And for a while there, I had found a good balance of schoolwork and organizing and activism. And I had neglected um, hanging out with friends, parties, high school activities, um, any sort of like romantic relationships or anything like that, that is really, you know, what people think about when you think of a high school experience. I was like, I don't need a high school experience. I just need to act on this. Um, and so for a while I was going really hard, organizing, organizing, working, exerting myself and everything was okay. Um, until the summer of 2017 where I experienced like my first real like fit of like very, very severe climate anxiety. Now, I already have a chronic anxiety disorder, so I'm already a very anxious and worried person. Um, I also have OCD, which makes me obsess over things. The way it manifests is like I'll pick something to worry about, and that's all I can think about constantly. It takes over my life. It's terrible. Would not recommend. Um, and so I already had this predisposition of like being a very anxious, worried, and obsessive person. And then 2017 was a perfect storm, well, an imperfect storm of a bunch of bad things happening. It was, there was first the Hurricane Maria and Hurricane Harvey and all these big climate disasters. And then um, he who shall not be named pulled the United States out of the Paris Climate Accords. And then um, there was just all these articles that were coming out about like, it's too late, it, like very doom and gloom climate defeatism articles of like, no matter what we do, we're all going to die. The science has shown, like, even if we cut all carbon emissions right now and switch to renewable energy right now, it would still be too late. So there's no hope. Da 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 da. And I was just found, came across all these articles, these very defeatist articles. Um, all of these climate disasters were happening around me, and the people, like, on the news, were like, "Oh, a once in a 500 year hurricane happening like three times. Nothing wrong here," or just stuff like that, where they weren't connecting the dots to climate change. They were just standing in the hurricane like, this is a bad hurricane and weren't really understanding the connection. So that was very frustrating. Then of course we had the administration of he who shall not be named. Um, and then all of this stuff was happening and to top it all off, um, I was very exhausted from just constantly, you know, working and working and working. And it felt like all of my efforts were futile. And on top of that, the climate, um, in Seattle was changing. It still is. So I've lived in Seattle from when I was two years old up until a few months ago when I moved to New York for film school. So I have lived there my whole life and I would have remembered if we had had wildfire smog covering the city regularly. That's something I would have remembered and I did not remember ever experiencing like smog in Seattle up until the summer of 2017. So Seattle wasn't on fire, but everywhere around us was California, Eastern Washington. I think some parts of Oregon and some parts of Canada as well. So we were just surrounded by everyone being on fire because of the climate crisis and all the smoke and smog was coming around and just covering our city in a thick layer of horrible smoke that made it very difficult to breathe. I don't have any respiratory illnesses, but I still had like really bad headaches and I was really lethargic and sad and like, I just felt sick even though like I don't have any respiratory illnesses, but the people around me who did have respiratory illnesses had to go to the emergency room, tried to drive down to other places to see if like they could find clean air, like literally going on a road trip of trying to find clean air. It was very, very apocalyptic. People wearing masks, like not like COVID masks, but they were wearing like breathing masks. Like it was in the apocalypse. I was like, Oh wow. Climate change is here, here. Wow. And so I just fell into a horrible fit of climate anxiety where it was very difficult for me to process what was happening. And I was just like, nothing means anything. Why do anything ever? Because we're all just going to die of this issue. And all the articles I was reading were not helping. And that was like, I experienced burnout. I experienced severe climate anxiety. And then on top of that, but the way that I um, pulled myself out of it that time was I had this great vision for young people marching on Washington and marching around the world for climate justice. Now this was before Greta Thunberg started school striking. This was before 
the Fridays for Future movement and the school strike for climate movement. So, and this was also before the March for Our Lives, which I think really mainstreamed youth activism because before this, like, yes, young people were taking action. Young people have been organizing since the beginning of movements, but it wasn't like in vogue. Like, I guess like it wasn't something that everyone paid attention to at the time, as opposed to now people like youth activism, youth activism. Back then it was like, not, not really like, that popular people were taking action but it wasn't like a thing as it is now if that makes sense and so i was like we need young people marching and mobilizing and standing up for our futures and so that kind of that vision of like action that i was going to take kind of gave me hope and pulled me out of that and so that ended up being what is now known as zero hour which is the youth climate organization that so from the the summer of 2017 to the summer of 2018 i was organizing non-stop 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 to put to start this organization slash movement zero hour and to organize the youth climate marches in Washington DC and what ended up being over 25 cities around the world, along with a team of many other amazing young organizers as well as adult mentors. So I would like post my to do list online so people could see how much I was doing. I'm like I'm just doing so much work and overworking myself and it was funny because I thought that was a flex at the time and now I'm like girl you were just unhealthy. Um, but yeah, and so, and I would like post like all the things I had going on and all the things I was doing and I kind of encouraging and like bragging on social media about how busy and stressed I was, which isn't something unique. A lot of people in all different fields because of the culture of like toxic, like go, 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 go work environment, rest is for the week. And so I was, that was pretty much my mentality. And then um, 2020 happened and the pandemic happened and I had all of these, I was traveling around the world giving all sorts of speaking engagements and stuff around the climate crisis and um, the coronavirus pandemic put an end to that. I had like a mini European book tour planned, the coronavirus put an end to that. All of these things that I had lined up, COVID put an end to. And it really forced me to reconcile with how unhappy I was and how unhealthy, I guess like, and, and how much of other aspects of life that I was neglecting and other interests and passions of mine, because I had this weird, not martyr complex, but just a weird complex of like, I have to neglect, I'm only a good organizer and a good activist if I neglect my own well-being and neglect what brings me joy and neglect my own happiness for the cause. Like that makes me so down for the cause. Like, yeah, look at me pushing down my interest to do what is best. Like, I don't, it was just a very toxic way of going about it, I think. And it led me to be super burnt out and super depressed. Um, just, I guess the pandemic, it made me like, kind of look around and be like, wow, like, so I was like, what do I actually really want to do? What brings me joy? What am I doing when I'm not fighting for climate justice? And the answer is I am watching TV and movies religiously. Like I love storytelling. I there, there are videos of me when I was little, just acting out stories. I love theater. I love telling stories. I would like pretend I could read books when I was three, like just dictating things. I would always be writing stories. I'm a storyteller at heart and there are little videos of me. Now I'm at film school and I'm focusing on things that don't really have much to do with climate change at all while still doing things around climate action on the side. And I'm still trying to figure it out. And so my conclusion and the reason why I tell you all this is not because I figured it out already and I'm living the perfect life and I have the perfect balance, but because I wanted to share that I'm not fully okay and I'm not, I don't fully know what I'm doing and I don't know if I found the right balance or not yet, but I think we should spend more time discussing the, the more messy aspects of activism and organizing and, and how it affects people's psychology and mental health and, and what it's like, you know, forfeiting your identity and interests for a movement to a point that it's unhealthy. Um, I think that if we neglect the mental health aspects of organizing and activism and climate anxiety and all of the stuff that comes with trying to fight against the end of the world, then we're going to have an entire generation of very burnt out, very cynical people who have been burnt out. Like I'm 18, like, like people are laughing, like you're burnt out at 18, girl, you have a whole lifetime ahead of you. And I'm like, I know. Um, so how do we as a movement fight against a quite literally well-oiled machine, a uh, very well-funded machine of the animal agriculture industry and the fossil fuel industries, how do we take them down 
without taking ourselves down in the process. And that's not something I have the answer to, but that's something that I want to offer a question to you all uh, and, and just kind of, you know, have us start thinking about, because we need people in this movement for the long run. This is a very difficult and long fight, constantly being bombarded with bad news and our opponents are much stronger and well-funded than us. We have more numbers than them, but they're well-funded and well-oiled. Um, and they're, they have a, a, the fossil fuel industry and the animal agriculture industry and Monsanto and everyone else who, who has, that is animal agriculture, but everyone else who has, you know, their big chemical industries and any, everyone else who has their hands in the government um, destroying life on earth. So we have to find a way where we can be in it for the long run and still maintain our humanity and our interests and and who we are outside of simply fighting for the end of the world. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that this was helpful for you, or at least if you're struggling with like just trying to find balance as an organizer or whatever, I hope that maybe this was relatable to you or, or, or helped in some way. Um, if you want to stay in touch with me and just get in touch. You can follow me on social media. I'm at Jamie underscore S underscore Margolin on Instagram at Jamie underscore Margolin on Twitter, uh, Jamie Sarai Margolin on Facebook and Jamie Margolin on TikTok. So just search up my name in any social media platform and send me a message, hit me up and we can continue this conversation. Thank you so much everyone for listening. I hope that you're staying safe and that you are um, trying to take care of yourself in the best that you can considering the state of the world that we're in. Have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy the rest of the Bioneers Conference.